Dirk hat eine Geschichte mit dem Ende. Und gucken. Das ist ein Ding. Well, their football roster is probably a little bit more full with open and roll kids. Uh, See, with football, you have competitive balance. Golf, you don't have competitive balance. Oh, that's why they get a British kid with less ball. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. We played a kid from Spain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sevi Garcia. Sergio, I mean. I, like, Brendan said the kid could barely, like, speak. He couldn't, like, understand what Brendan was saying. You know, like, the kid, it's like a foreign exchange student come over for a few months. Oh, it's Jordan Dolls. Yeah, he just brought his gloves in and they were like, oh, yeah, he shot three over the first day. We're like, Shh. Okay. All right, we're going to look at equations of tangent lines today. Okay, we've taken a look at lines, equation of lines, and we know if we have a point and a slope, we can find an equation of a line if we know a point and we know the slope. Using m, x minus x1 equals y minus y1. And we know we can find the slope of a line by using my delta y over delta x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But what this is expecting of us to find the slope, we need to know two points. Well, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to determine the equation of a tangent line. Well, now we have to go back and define what is the idea of a tangent. When you talk about a tangent to a graph, what, what is a tangent to a graph? If I draw a tangent line, I'm looking at the x value of 2. And I want to draw a tangent line at this x value oh, of 2. That's how far it is from 0. No, tangent lines. Opposite over adjacent is a trig. Yeah, it's you, all it's you, 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 you remember something from trig. There you go. Bravo for that. What is a tangent line? Should have learned it in geometry. It is a line that intersects a graph at exactly one point. Okay, what you dealt with in geometry is you looked at circles and you had tangent lines to a circle and that tangent line intersects at exactly one point it just touches it it bounces up against it lays against it but it only intersects at one point so when you're talking about a tangent line you're talking about a line intersecting a graph of a relation at exactly one point. Or we can think of it, the graph of the function and the line share one point in common. They share one point. The graph and the line share one point. That point is called the point of tangency. The point of tangency. Well, 
Well, if we take a look at our function y equals x squared, a graph of our function, and we want to find the equation of the line and the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. What we're saying is this is our point of tangency. at x equals 2. This is the point that we're looking at. And we want to be able to find the slope and the equation. This is going to be much easier for you to do. at this x value of 2. This is my POT, my pot, my point of tangency, at x equals 2. Well, if x is equal to 2, this is my point of tangency, and I'm looking at the function y equals x squared, what is our y value at that point? What is the y value? It's 4. It is 4. Because... The graph and the line share the one point, that point of tangency. The graph and line share the one point, the point of tangency. I know my x value is a value of 2. Well, if they share this, y is equal to x squared. So at this point, we have y is equal to x squared. That's this graph right here. This point is the ordered pair 2, 4. It is a point 2, 4. It is a point that lies on the graph, y equals x squared, but it's also a point that lies on the point of tangency, or the line, y equals x squared, or this tangent line. So this lies on this line, and it also lies here. It's that one point that they share. They share one point, the point of tangency. Well, us to be able to find an equation of a line, this point right here is the ordered pair 2, 4. This gives me my y1 and my x1. That gives me the point to be able to determine the equation of a line. The question is, is what is the slope of this line? Well, I can determine my slope as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but what that means for us to have, it means for us to have two points. To find the slope of a line, I need two points. Well, I know one point, the ordered pair 2, 4. I know one of them already. I don't have a second one. Why? Because this is a tangent line that falls out along here and I can't find a second point. So let's take a look at this exercise. If my function value was 3, what would be our y value on a y equals x squared? As a value of 9. So if I take a look At x is 3, and y is 9. It takes me up to this point right here. And what I ask you to do is draw a line
from this point down to this point. Now we know this ordered pair here is three and nine. I know that ordered pair is three and nine. I know that ordered pair is two and four. I know two points. What is the slope? That should be it. Word secant. What is the slope of the secant line to those two points? I have two, four, and three, nine. Well, my slope is delta y over delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we have 9 minus 4 over 3 minus 2. So we have 5 over 1 or a value of 5. So that is my slope of this line. So this slope is 5. This is going delta y over delta x. Now I'm saying my x value is 2.5. So my x value is now 2.5. I could draw from two and a half up and find a point here. And x equals two and a half, what's our y value going to be? 6.25. Because x is 2.5. My y value is 2.5 squared. So if we draw a line, once again, this should be a secant line because we intersect at more than one point. If I draw my secant line from this point, down to here. Here is my secant line. And we can find our slope as delta y over delta x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. My y2 is 6.25. My y1 is a value of four, a nine, uh, 4 still. And then we have 2.5 minus 2. So what is the slope of our line now? I have 6.25 minus 4, it gives me 2.25, divided by 0 0.5, 4.5. So the slope of the my new line here, this slope is 4.5. Well, what if I had 2.3? If I go 2.3 and draw my line up there.
then draw my secant line from 3.5 or 2.3. Well, what's my function value 2.3? That's 2.3 squared. Five point two nine. I could do my slope again this is my delta Y over delta X. So we have 5.29 minus 4 over 2.3 minus 2. So I can subtract 4 and divide by 0.3. We get 4.3. What if I went 2.1? So I'm taking 2.1 up to my graph and drawing in my line from 2.1 down to 2. The problem we run into, at least for me because my lines are so thick, is I'm not being able to distinguish too much between my tangent line and my line I just draw on my secant line. But I can still, let's see, is that 4.41? Yep. I can still find my slope as my delta y over delta x. 4.41 minus 4 over 2.1 minus 2. So we have, let's see, 0.41 divided by 0 0.1. 4.1. What if I went 2.01? Yeah, 4.0401. Our slope comes down to what? 4.01. And if I started to, if I go to the next one, I can't distinguish between my secant line I just drew at 4.2.1 and 4.01 and the line 2 and 4. So what are we doing here? Well, our x value started at 3, then it went to 2.5, then 2.3, 2.1, 2.01. My x value is getting closer and closer to what? 2. And what we talked about yesterday with respect to limits that's the essence of limits. We are dealing with a slope here. We're taking a limit as x approaches 2 of basically our delta y over delta x. Our 
are slow every time we did we as x got closer and closer to two we we're doing our slope delta y over delta x well what do you think the slope of our tangent line is we went from 5 to 4.5 to 4.3 to 4.1 to 4.01 what do you think the slope of our tangent line is four because if i took 0 0.0 2.001 i would get 4.001 if i had another zero here i might have another zero in there so i'm going to continue to get closer and closer to zero or to four am i ever going to equal it no but as i take my limit as x approaches two of delta y over delta x i get closer to four once again this arrow approaches this arrow approaches as x approaches 2 my slope will approach a value of 4 will it ever equal no but it will approach it so we can find the slope of any tangent line at x equals a as our limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And what we are doing is basically throwing our limit into a slope function or determining the slope. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if we take a look at this problem, we are trying to find the slope of a tangent line at x equals 2. So we have the limit as x is approaching 2. Okay, that's the value we're trying to approach. Of f of x minus f at 2 over x minus 2. What this is going to create is it's going to create a discontinuity that is removable, going back to what we did yesterday. Our function that we're dealing with is x squared. Minus our function value at 2, f of 2 is 4, over x minus 2. We've just created a limit with a removable discontinuity. We can try subbing in 2, but I get 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2. I get 0 over 0. But we can factor the top. Don't forget to tag along your limit. The x minus 2s go bye-bye, we factor, we cancel, we sub, so we have 2 plus 2, which is a value of 4. So we get our limit, our limit is a value of 4. This is also the slope of our tangent line. The point of tangency is 2, 4, and our slope is 4. Now we could find the equation. 4x minus 2 is equal to y minus 4. 
four X minus eight equals Y minus four. And once again, you could get it in either form. Y equals four X plus four, minus four. Or I can have four X minus Y is equal to negative four is equal to four. The instantaneous rate change of a function. Instantaneous means tangent ideas. We have two different ways of dealing with this. I like the second one. Uh, a lot of books will throw you into the first one, which is fine. Uh, what it turns into is your difference quotient. Remember back to difference quotient. This was difference quotient right here, but we threw a limit into it. I like the second one because this throws us into delta y over delta x. So either one is acceptable. You can choose whichever one you want to do. If we take a look at what we just did, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus or a plus h. You know, like I said, when we're dealing with a value, I don't like utilizing the second one. I like utilizing the, or the first one. I like utilizing the second one because you would have to put two in for here and two in for here. So we have two plus limits H approaches. Two plus H quantity squared minus F at two all over H, you would have to expand this out and you'd be able to simplify down to the same solution. Once again, this is the instant rate, instantaneous rate change. This is also a tangent and slope of that tangent line. Find an instantaneous rate change of a function at the given value of X. We have our function f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Once again, we can utilize each one of these values, but at this value, this is your a value right here. This is what a is equal. So we can take our limit as x approaches 2, is my a value, over f of x minus f at 2 over x minus 2. Substituting in, f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 4 minus our function value at 2. Our function value at 2 is 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4. So we have 4 plus 6 is 10 minus 4. We get 6. Over x minus 2. Once again, this will always create a discontinuity that you can remove. If I try to put 2 in here, I get 4 plus 6, which is 10, minus 10, I get 0 on top. On the bottom, I get 0. Once 
once again, as we talked about yesterday, what has to be a factor on top? Uh, X minus two. X minus two. So I can check my other factor. I'm going to have an X. I need to get a negative 10 there. I got a negative two. So that has to be X plus five. We can factor, we can cancel, and then we sub, 2 plus 5, which is 7. My A values of A9, I have F of X minus F at 9 over X minus 9. We have square root of x minus my value at 9, which is 3, over x minus 9. What is the bottom factor to? Well, if I had x squared minus 9, this would factor to x plus 3, x minus 3. Difference of perfect squares. Because x times x gives us x squared. Plus 3x minus 3x, they cancel out, minus 9. I'm good. How can I factor just x minus 9? What can we multiply by itself to get x? Square root of x. If I multiply square root of x times square root of x, we get x. To get 9, I got plus 3 minus 3. If I check my mental multiplication, I got plus 3 square root of x minus 3 square root of x. They go away. And then I get my minus 9. These cancel, so we're left with 1 over square root of 9 plus 3, so we have 1 over 9, 3 plus 3, which is 1, 6. Just because it's not a perfect square, we can factor as a difference of squares. Homework. Page 102, 103, 1 to 31, the odds. Um, we'll continue to work with the idea of limits. Once again, limits is the basis to everything in calculus because there's no exactness with limits. As we approach, we approach. As we get closer to one, what do we get closer to? <clears throat> 